have done uh, several advance, uh, we have several advances in technology which have improved uh, the way that we do the surgery and uh, actually the experience that we have collected has shown us that we have even some problems, not only some benefits from this uh, surgery and which uh, um, support the reason why we need uh, uh, bioethics uh, um, dealing with this problem with the, the brain stimulation above all and how we can deal with these issues. Uh, I think the more modern concept is not not really the brain stimulation, but is a neuromodulation. So when we 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 act in the way that we interfere with the abnormal or normal function of brain, spine, and nerves. So we can do make lesions. We can use the brain stimulation, transcranial magnetic stimulation, motor cortex stimulation, spinal cord stimulation, and nerve stimulation. But when we talk about brain modulation, we are touching two major areas of medicine, neurology and psychiatry. And you see that uh, in the neurology field, most of the diseases that we are dealing with are movement disorders. Parkinson's disease, Medtronic tells us that there are in the world more than 100,000 patients who have uh, had the brain stimulation for Parkinson's disease. But we have patients with dystonia, uh, essential tremor, Huntington disease, and even epilepsy, migraine, pain, Gilles de la Tourette, and Alzheimer. The last three diseases, they are shared with psychiatry. Because I think that uh, over the last uh, few years, uh, the psychiatrists, they have seen that the brain stimulation can be actually applied to several of the psychiatry diseases, like depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, or anorexia, obesity, behavioral addiction. So I think really we have to thank uh, uh, the neurologist uh, Polak and the neurosurgeon Ben Abid in Grenoble because they were the pioneers of the, the modern concept of the brain stimulation. And uh, I, I told them, I think this is the second French Revolution. In roughly one, two minutes, you can see the benefit. So for patients and their family, this was really something amazing. It's a neuroimaging advancement that with the new technology, we can better understand what is the final mechanism of action of uh, the brain stimulation. And we know that the brain stimulation is still as effective after 10 years. So we can say that in the long term, the brain stimulation can improve the quality of life. But now, because there is a significant improvement in quality of life, the idea is to do surgery earlier when the patient, they start having disability before they lose their job, they lose all the social uh, connection, the social life. This patient had an excellent improvement from the motor point of view uh, of his symptoms of Parkinson's disease. But what happened was this patient became hypomanic just stimulating. On the other side, you can have some, when you reduce the medication after surgery, the patient, they become apathetic. So we need to balance risk and benefit of what we are doing with the brain stimulation. So we need appropriate selection of patients. We need to clarify the expectation, what we can improve and what we cannot improve. We have to educate the patients and we have to take care even of the caregiver. So you have to always balance the risk and benefit.